What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Fins Up Network. I am Ben Morgan, and in today's video, I've got some thoughts, I've got some takeaways from the Mike McDaniel interview from the Fish Tank podcast. And if you're not aware of what the Fish Tank podcast is, great name, by the way. It's the Miami Dolphins podcast hosted by OJ McDuffie, McDuffie, the original OJ, the original Juice, and Seth Levitt. And I'm not going to go question by question, just regurgitating the answers. Check out the video on your own as well. I want to do a recap video. I want to highlight some of the things that stood out to me. But go through and check it out yourself as well. And when I was listening, I was keeping notes. And I wanted to go through every single note that I had. And I realized, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be damn near longer than the original video itself. So I tried pulling out like three or four bullet points that really stood out to me that I could also kind of elaborate on and put my spin on as well. So let's go through those. Because I thought it was interesting when he talked about what's your message to your players between now and when training camp starts. Because Mike McDaniel said, you know what? I want to ride the wave. I want training camp to start tomorrow. I know I need rest. I know I need to rejuvenate myself. But I want to just get going, which as a fan, you're like, yeah, absolutely. We want to get going too. But what he said and what he really highlighted was you can't do anything by yourself. Football is the ultimate team game. You can be the best at your position. You can go all in all day by yourself. You can become the best person you can be. But if you're not helping out your teammates, if you're not there for your teammates, if you make a wrong decision on the field, off the field, there's a trickle down effect to that. So yes, relax, have your family time. But remember that you have teammates that are counting on you to not be in shape one week after training camp starts, but right as training camp starts, you need to be in shape, ready to go because we have a young team. We have a first time head coach. We've got young guys that are going to have to play huge roles. So your decisions impact others. That was one of my biggest takeaways. But a thing that I loved that he hit on, I'm glad that they asked this question, was talking about his time with Washington. And uh, more specifically, his time with RG3. Because if you remember RG3's rookie year, I believe he won rookie of the year. He was looking good. It was before all those knee injuries and before everything kind of fell apart on him, uh, an NFL career that looked promising that went down fairly fast. But he said, when we drafted him, you typically bring in a specialist that's had experience working with players of that skill set. Well, they didn't do that. They did their own homework. They did their own research. They made an offense that was going to fit his strengths. They did it all on their own. And it worked. And it taught him that you don't need to make every single player fit your scheme. But rather, you can take your scheme and you can kind of make it work around players that you have. Now, think about the dolphin situation. You have Tua Tungavailoa. Typically, what we think about him, RPO-based offense. Well, that's great. I know Mike McDaniel already has some of that in his offense, but he's also this under-center type of quarterback in a lot of positions he has, his own blocking scheme with the running game. Not everything is completely RPO-based, but it lets you know, like, hey, I've got my scheme but I'm going to make it work for Tua. And then taking it on to another position, look at the whole Mike, uh, not Mike, Mike McDaniel, Mike Gesicki debacle from the offseason. It's, is Manny going to tag him? Are they going to resign him? Are they just going to let him walk? What's going to happen here? Because he doesn't, he doesn't block like your traditional tight end that you want in this Mike McDaniel-led offense. Well, Mike McDaniel has made no secret about it. Like, hey, I'm going to play to this guy's strengths. Maybe he's not the world's best blocker, but he can work on it. And he's an elite pass catching tight end. Guess what? I'm going to take advantage of that. The guy is a mismatch nightmare. So it just shows his flexibility and being able for him to learn that at such a young age, he's still so young, but being able to learn that when he did is going to be crucial. The next bullet point that I pulled out, one of my favorite parts of the entire interview, he said, players can smell a fraud. Basically, you need to be yourself. As long as you can provide something to that player to help them get better, that player is not going to care really how you deliver the message as long as they're getting it and as long as it's helping them make, make them better. And he brought up the, the perfect example. He says, hey, I'm a young kid 
fresh out of Ivy League football. I'm dealing with the Houston Texans and Andre Johnson in his prime. What is this guy going to learn from me? But he realized like, hey, if I can help this guy who's already good get taken to the next level, he's going to believe in me. If I can't, I, 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 you already lost him. You're not going to get him back. So regardless of how you deliver that message, if you can provide something, if you have your own skill set that you can provide and translate over to these next players, they're going to appreciate you. They're going to find you useful. So I, I love that he's had that experience that he's one of those guys. I wanted to say this as well during this video. Mike McDaniel is one of those guys that you listen to, give an interview, just talk in general, and you feel like you get smarter. He, he provides that. And there's, there's people like that in, in different industries throughout the world that, that we see. But when it comes to coaches, you get a lot of Bill Belichick, boring coach talk, and you're not really going to get much out of him. Wow, Mike McDaniel is the next generation of the coaches when we're talking about stuff like that. He, he, he's quick-witted. It's, it's, the, it's the humor. It's everything that he can provide. But he does it in, in such a way that you find yourself – as a captivated audience member, just soaking it all in and being like, oh yeah, that, that does make sense. I, I don't want to go on too much longer about just him and his style and technique, but it's the style and technique that I would prefer from a leader. So that's why I think it just hits home so much for me as well. But the, the last bullet point I wanted to hit on here before I wrap it up, I love the fact that he pointed out that his personality, his style, it's who he's always been. He hasn't changed. This didn't just come out of nowhere. We're just seeing it now because he's in the spotlight. He is a NFL head coach. He's one of 32 guys that has this gig. So now the fact that he's he's in the media damn near every single day, we're just seeing it. But he was self-aware enough to the point that this is going to play off. People are only making a big deal about it right now because, because it's fresh, because it's new. At some point in time, that newness, that, 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 that flirtiness, this infatuation is going to wear off and we're going to need to produce results. And the fact that he's not just saying that and someone didn't have to tell him, but it's like, okay, I'm already aware that I'm doing things differently and I'm getting media coverage because of it and everyone's laughing, and have a good time. That's only going to go on for so long. The true adversity is going to come if we lose two or three games, if we have a couple of injuries. Then what happens? Then my quirkiness, my one-liners, my dry sense of humor, people aren't going to care. People are going to be saying, well, who's the next coach? Because this guy didn't work. Already aware that at the end of the day, it's going to come down to performance on the field from him, from the players as well. Well, like I said, I, I could have recapped this damn near this interview for longer than the entire interview actually ended up going. Wanted to just hit on a couple of bullet points, though, but I definitely recommend checking that out. Like, like I said, it was the, uh, the fish tank. OJ McDuffie, Seth Lavitt. So check that out. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Fins Up Network. Um, thank you to everyone who already has. Go ahead and leave your comments if you've seen the video um, already as well. But until next time, Miami Dolphins fans, Fins Up.